welcome to episode 10 of Carrots and Cosmos. Later on I'll be looking at my allotment um, with my GoPro camera for the first time, checking on any progress um, and see if I'm winning. I'll also be doing a slug and snail repellent, cooking one up in the kitchen. Um, but first, let's go and see what Jazz has been up to this week. So Jazz, it's over to you. Thanks Jim, hello all. Uh, it's been hectic here but I have managed to get some filming done. So first, uh, let's go and have a look outside. Just in my little plastic greenhouse that we put up, here's the Julie Drake bucket, so um, they're all coming up. Um, a little bit of action in some of the other ones. Um, not much action in these ones, but in my aulas down that side, there's um, these are my test aulas. So this one's doing the best one, that's the one with, um, what's that got in it? That's the one with uh, vermiculite, although I think, so, <laughs> I think some perlite fell in the absolute top of it now because of the winds and things, I had some perlite on the top, so it just um, fell on the top. That's the uh, that's the just perlite one, I think, and that's both at the end with a little sprout coming up. And this is the one with nothing in it, and that's, um, well, it's got soil in, obviously. <laughs> but, uh, that's coming up. We've had some slug problems in here, so that's why the slug pellets, and they are all organic certified ones that don't harm other animals or pets or anything, but um, we have kind of had a, a lot of um, slug trails and things. We've also got loads of spiders in here. There's one right there. Spiders are not my favourite thing. And these are the jumpy spiders as well. But that's the update from inside my little greenhouse. Now, I'm no flower expert, but I think that these amaranthus might be ready to pot on. So that's one thing I'm going to do right now. So what I'm doing is I'm just getting anything with a little point on it, like a pencil or I got one of these little Dibber things free with a magazine a couple of years ago. Just getting right underneath the plant that you're aiming for. Just try and push it out. Oh, got two there. Probably still a little bit young, but they're just getting a bit crowded, and I don't want them to all tangle up. Make a little hole. water them. I'm just going to lift up this little corner, pour some water into there so they can soak it up from the bottom. I've kept this, um, this water in the conservatory so it's not completely cold water, it's a little bit warm, warmed up from the sun so Hopefully it doesn't shock them and they'll be happy and watered. I've got lots more to show you, some sewing and my sweet peas and uh, tulips. First, let's sneak up on Gemma. Oh, hi. Just checking out my um, Gardener's World magazine. This month's April. Seeing what Monty and Alan have been up to since I last saw them a few episodes ago. Um, it came with this uh, slow release controlled plant feed, which looks very handy. Uh, it also came with some tomato super sweet 100 seeds. So uh, I'm looking forward to to seeing if they they come out. I've planted some already. But what I 
was most surprised about was the fact that, um, I'm just on the intro here, I haven't looked at the rest of the magazine, it tells me it's Jazz Appreciation Month. Now I had no idea, Jazz obviously kept that from me. Uh, you can see it's there. So I thought I'd take this opportunity to, uh, to tell Jazz how much I appreciate her. Um, and by doing that, because we all know she loves to sing songs, she wrote me a song, so I thought, well, maybe I could say I need her. But I'm no songwriter, so I thought I'll do it for her favourite ever artiste and her favourite ever song by her favourite artiste. I happen to know she loves this song. So just for you, Jazz, I'm going to sing Thank You by Dido. So here goes. And now... Mm, nah. Let's go and see what's going on at the allotment instead. Okay, just trying out my GoPro. Never used one of these before, so here's my bean bed, my first one. Uh, hopefully you can see it. Okay, I might have to point things out. I don't know how this is going to come out. There's no viewfinder. So, um, yeah, I did see these little wigwams that are really rubbish. Uh, signs of anything I've done uh, uh, anything that's just not quite right uh, I'll point some some of those things out later but one of the spokes has come out of that I mean that doesn't look great does it the uh, wigwams but I will redo that so I'm going to have Mons 2 sugar snap runner beans probably some squash and pumpkin down this little my raspberries don't laugh at the weeds I've got to do. I think I saw some sproutage. Is that word? Sproutage? A series of poles are what my boyfriend put in the other day. That's going to be all sweet peas hopefully so I need to get some netting to go along there. Uh, and this one is one of my asparagus beds. I haven't looked closely, I kind of daren't because of the, um, the weeds. <laughs> Um, but if, I, if it doesn't come up, if I don't get any asparagus... Oh, well done. What's this? I've got some asparagus! I'm actually more excited about that than I thought. Look, asparagus crowns. <laughs> Amazing. So what's the date today? It's the 12th of April. And they're coming up, so we'll, we'll monitor those. Here's my potato bed. Uh, I've got Aaron Pilot and Charlotte in at the moment. I'll do some Maris Piper maybe in May. Here we've got some onions. Um, and then the other day I planted spring onions, radishes, purple carrots, purple cosmos. The other side of this polytunnel, the polytunnel doesn't need to be there at the moment actually, but the other side will be cucumbers and tomatoes. And in it, I've got some little, I did some um, little gems. I've got another one to plant in there, actually. I'm going to remove this off of there soon. This is my annual bed for my annual flowers. I planted some anemones the other day. I think I'm an enemy man now. I've got loads of anemones. I might have to stop getting so many. This is me warming my soil up for my zinnia snapdragon and ammy bed. Here's my little dahlia patch with a euphorbia in the corner. I sh I, I'm hoping I can get about six in there, maybe more. Um, so we'll see. This is my path, as uh, Ian liked to point out to me. You know, this one is facing outwards, that one's facing inwards. Inconsistent, that is that is my middle name. I had a good slogan earlier, I can't remember what it was. Something about something about not being quite right. Anyway, I'm rambling. Another asparagus patch, don't laugh. Let's see if we can find any asparagus on this one. Not at the moment. Where this weed control mat is, that's gonna be uh, sunflowers. All sunflowers. That's my perennial weeds uh, soaking in there, like the, like they said. Look at my nine bark. It's coming on well. Um, 
got some achelia down there. This is my compost bin with my foxgloves, my snail eaten foxgloves. I sprinkled some verbena seeds down here the other day because I can't grow them at home so I'm hoping that they will um, germinate but you know if not I haven't lost anything. This here is uh, a still bee which is one of my favourite one of my favourites. They're all my favourites really. <laughs> don't tell don't tell them but they're all my favourites. Now this little fella this I thought I'd use like a propagator. So any seeds that I had that I could not get to work indoors I thought do you know what sod it I'll put it straight outdoors see if anything happens if not I haven't lost anything if so happy days so I did one line of grasses one line of mixed kind of meadowy type herbs so some alliums nigella god I can't remember what else so I'm going to have a look in a sec um well look now actually see if anything's germinating it's exactly a week ago I planted them but I do need to water them that's why I'm down here today it's stopped raining now Let's have a look. I can see, <laughs> see some weeds. Spuds are still doing well. Look at those. They're the Aaron pilots with the massive chicks. Started to get a little flower on my gym. A little concerned about uh, my Sarpo mirrors. Nothing from them whatsoever. That was Julie Drake's challenge. That was March the 13th, something like that, 21st. I can't remember. My first harvest of some beautiful anemones. I've got to cut them or they'll go to seed and stop flowering. I can't use them in anything just yet, but they're gorgeous. Oh, that helicopter is low. Stay tuned for Gemma's great slug repelling recipe, but first I'm going to catch up on some sewing. So I'm just having a quick catch up on some sewing. Everybody seems to have sewed everything that I'm sewing already, so, um, uh, you know, going by the packets I'm still okay, but um, I'm just lagging a bit behind, I fear. So in the first line, I'm going to do some kale, uh, Nero de Toscana. This one here. So I'm going to do them in this row here. I really don't need any more than, say, four plants. So what I might do is do two in each cell and thin them out to the best ones and hope that I get enough so that I can plant four out at the end of it and if I have more than that then I can um, see if Gemma wants some or anybody else wants some. Let's get them out of their packet. Kale seeds. One less kale seed. So I'm going to do these in a similar way to how I've done quite a few of my seeds. So I'm going to start by making some little holes. And then I'm going to use some of this, um, mycorrhizal, uh, mycorrhizal fungi. I'll put some in a pot to make it easier. And then I'm just going to sprinkle them into these holes. Now those of you who have been watching some of our other videos and have seen me doing it with this stuff I know that I've been putting some um, layer of soil on top of that and then putting the, the seed in here and some people have asked me why I'm doing it um, that way because a lot of um, people are doing it where you sprinkle it on the roots but I'm simply doing it that way because that's how it says um, to do it on the packet and then you just put the seeds and then I'm just gonna cover them all with the compost now in this next row I'm going to do some Chinese cabbage it's supposed to grow a lot faster than um, the normal cabbage and you can do a couple of sowings so I'm going to do one row now and if I remember to I'm going to do another sow later on 
So I'm only going to do one in each of these um, holes uh, this time. And these are the seed. They don't even look real, they look more like something that you'd sprinkle on top of a cake. In this seed tray I also sowed some coal rabbi seed variety gigant from the real seed catalogue, a variety of spring onion called ramrod from the organic gardening catalogue. Uh, and in this fifth and final row I'm going to sow some chives, uh, just normal chives in the first three and then some garlic chives in the last two. And there we have it. Here are the um, tulips. Um, they seem to be growing without any stem at all. It's like leaves and then the flower coming straight out of the leaves with um, little to no stem. There's, these are the ones here. They haven't quite... Um, well, they haven't flowered yet, but... I mean, these ones look a bit similar. They've got a bit more stem, at least you can see some kind of stem on them, but they're still really stunted. I don't know if that's um because I planted them too deep or, or because they were planted so late, but um like little dwarf tulips. So the sowing marathon continues. I'm now going to be sowing some sweet corn, um, sativa early. Sweet corn seed is the sweet corn kernels. So this is what sweet corn seed looks like, old teeth. So these are the sweet peas that I planted before <clears throat> into these root trainers. But I've still got some space where I didn't sow any and I've also got a few gaps where the sweet peas haven't come up. So I'm going to sow um, some of this sweet corn seed into these little pouches that are free. Now I've never sown them before but um, <clears throat> I've seen other people sow them and it seems just to be a case of the usual hole in, seed in, cover it up type thing. So I'll just do the rest of these and I'll give them a water and they can all go out in the glass grow house. So that's 16 sweet corn sewn and a well deserved cup of coffee. Well, that's it from me. Mmm, something smells good. Jamie, you're cooking something. Hiya, uh, I was just doing my shopping and um, as I was driving along, I had a revelation about how I can get rid of snails and slugs. Um, based on loads of different methods I've heard. It involves a bit of cooking, so let's go to the kitchen and uh, I'll show you my made-up plan of a slug and snail repellent and we'll see if it works. Excuse the state of the uh, unfinished kitchen. Um, I found some eggs that are past their use-by date, so I'm going to now crack them open and save the shells. So I just gave them a quick rinse and now I'm going to put them in the water just to crush them all up. Voila. So now I'm going to put them into a baking tray and then pop them in the oven at about 170. I'll put them there. there you go, on the baking tray all I need to put into the oven. Keep my eye on those. Let you know how I get on. I'm going to take them out and have a look. I think they might be done. So that's been 15 minutes. So yeah, when they're done, you can kind of hear that they've hardened up a bit. So I'm just going to wait for them to cool and then put them in a in a bag or a container with 
a load of um, rock salt and oats. And then I'm going to use it to um, sprinkle around my sweet peas and any other things that I need to um, to protect from sna snails and slugs. Obviously, it will. I'll have to do this a few times because this won't go very far. But um, I'm just testing it out for now, and I'll let you know how I get on. And here's the final mixture. Slugs and snails stay away. <laughs> Never get bored of a cat playing piano, do you? No. Can I have a look at the gardening news now, please? Thank you. What? What's this? Jazz, won't it? Jazz, did you give him the biscuits? Don't lie to me, Jazz. But Easter was weeks ago. Fish and chips? <sighs> Get well soon, Alan. I'm afraid that's all we've got time for today, so um, hope to see you in episode 11. Thanks for watching.